Hello everybody and welcome back to Chem Talk, where today we will be talking about Hess's Law. So first question everyone should be asking is, what is Hess's Law? So this typically relates to the heat of a reaction or the delta H with standard F, uh, which is equal to the sum of the heats of the reactions used to make up the overall reaction. Now, basically, those words all just mean that in order for in order to find the overall reaction's heat, we need to break down the reaction into different reactions, so small, small reactions, in order to find the overall heat, right? So consider this example, which is A gas going to D gas. Let's just imagine these are different compounds that we might be working with. And we are given three different reactions, one going from A gas to B gas, which is a delta H1 of X, and then B to C with delta H2 equals Y, and then C to D, in, which goes to delta H3 equals Z. Now we see that we do have A as a reactant on our reactant side, and then we have D as our product on the product side, and we see that we have B and C as our intermediates. When we equal all of these reactions overall, our intermediates cancel out, and we're given A, gas goes to D gas. Now, using these three different equations, we can see that our overall reaction delta H is going to equal X plus Y plus Z, or our heat of formation is going to be delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3. Now, Hess's law can actually be applied in the real world. A lot of the times, reactions are used for making gases, like natural gases. Um, sometimes you might be able to use these reactions in order to make uh, greenhouse gases in the lab. And a lot of the time, scientists and chemists need to know the amount of exact heat needed in order to make these gases. So let's consider the following reaction. So car solid carbon reacts with H2H2O gas, and that reacts to have products of CO2 gas plus 2H2 gas. Now, we're given the overall reactions of our carbon solid reacts with O2 gas in order to get CO2 gas, and that has a delta H of negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. And the second reaction that we have is 2H2 gas plus O2 gas goes and reacts, with, reacts to make 2H2O gas. Then our delta H2 equals negative 483.6 kilojoules over moles. Now, we see that we actually need H2O as a reactant rather than what the current half reaction makes or what one of our parts of reactions makes. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to reverse this reaction in order for our um, H2O to become a reactant instead. So this actually changes the sign of our delta H2. And instead of it being negative 483.6, it's actually going to change it to be a positive 483.6. So we see that our delta H of formation is going to be delta H1 plus delta H2. And with that sign change, we see that our overall um, delta H of formation for our reaction is going to be a positive 90.1, which means that energy needs to be put in or heat needs to be added. Another way to look at this is that delta H1 is for making our products and delta H2 is for making our reactants which means that we are actually, if we're looking at it with the way of making reactants with products, we're actually not going to change our second reaction to change the signage over here because our delta H of formation, if we're looking at it in the way of products and reactants, you would take your products and uh, subtract your reactants from it and that would naturally change the sign uh, using the formula and that would again give us the same answer of 90.1 kilojoules over moles. It typically depends the amount of reactions you're given that make up the overall reaction. If you have two reactions, typically you're able to get away with using the products minus reactants. Sometimes if you're given three or more, um, you're going to have to use the overall delta H uh, standard F equals delta H1 plus delta H2 and so on and so forth. Now let's go into an example that shows a little bit more complexity when it comes to our Hess's law. So 
we are given the following reaction and we want to calculate the delta H or the heat used for this reaction. So it's CS2 liquid plus 3O2 gas goes and makes the products of CO2 gas plus 2SO2 gas. Now we're given three reactions that make up our overall um, reaction. And what we need to do here is that we need to rearrange these three reactions we've been given in order to equate to the overall reaction. So basically what we're doing is we're looking to make sure that we have the same amount or stoichiometry is going to be the same. And we're also looking to make sure that our reactants are on the reactant side and our products are on the product side. So that when you add everything all into one full equation, the intermediates cancel out and everything is where it should be. Now, when we do that, our first reaction, um, carbon plus O2 goes to CO2, that we don't need to do anything with because CO2 is our product and since it's already a product, we just leave it untouched, which means that our delta H1 is going to stay the exact same. Our second reaction, we actually need to double it because in order to get 3O2, we would need to add one more O2 and it would also benefit because we also need to add one more mole of SO2. So by multiplying the total reaction by two, that would give us the complete stoichiometry necessary. When you multiply the reaction or when you double the reaction by two, you're also doubling the delta H2 by two as well because you're having twice the amount than you originally have, which means you need twice the amount of heat that you originally had. For our third reaction, we see that we have CS2 as one of our products. However, when it goes to the overall reaction that we need to equate, we actually have CS2 as one of our reactants. So we need to flip our reaction. What that does is that's going to change the signage of our delta H3. So instead of it being positive 87.9 kilojoules per mole, that is going to be a negative 87.9 kilojoules per mole. Now the next and the last step is going to be to add all of our individuals delta H together. So our delta H of formation is going to be delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3. And that is going to be negative 393.5 plus negative 1187.2 plus negative 87.9 and our total amount of heat needed is going to be negative 1668.6 kilojoules per mole. If you have any questions about our standard heat or formation or anything like that, we do have a separate video on that on our channel. So you're more than welcome to go check that out over there as well.